Welcome back. We're back out on the surf today. You're gonna do some surf fishing for hopefully some surf perch, maybe some striped bass. Who knows what else might bite out here We're out in the ocean. Anything can happen. But today, we'll be using a different kind of bait that I've never used before on the channel, and that's these guys right here. Ready for the reveal. Don't want them to jump out of there, but those are live grass shrimp. Basically like one of those margaret shrimp you'd see in the store, but obviously they're a little bit smaller and they're live. So hopefully they're gonna move around out there and entice a bite from a hungry fish. So one of the reasons why a lot of people don't use these, and personally one of the reasons why I don't use them very often, is they don't stay alive very long. So the best case scenario, I think you could keep them alive one, maybe two nights at the most. So if you buy them maybe the night before you're going fishing or the morning of, in my opinion, would be the best case scenario. And in order to keep them alive the longest, this is the strategy that I've used. So first things first, you wanna keep them in an ice chest, obviously. And normally I would leave this ice chest in the car and bring a little Tupperware like this. So what I have in this Tupperware is an ice, basically an ice pack. You can use you know, one of the blue ice things that you can refreeze, or just put some ice cubes in a bag there. I don't wanna put them loose in the Tupperware because once they melt, it's gonna cause fresh water to be in that Tupperware. And once the fresh water infiltrates the shrimp, I feel like it's gonna kill them faster. So I keep them in a bag, that way it keeps that fresh water concealed. And then I have this paper towel right here, and you can use a rag as well, but I didn't have a rag this morning, so I just threw a paper towel in there. And take your shrimp, this is just the container that they give it to you in the store. And then what you're gonna do with this, is you're literally just gonna dump it right in. And Normally when they give me the shrimp, there's some extra salt water in the bottom of this container. So that's gonna get soaked up immediately by that paper towel that we have in there. And so, like I said, I don't want any fresh water to be covering these shrimp. And I also don't want any salt water to be just stagnant in there. So that's why we have that paper towel. It's just gonna keep them nice and fresh. And I feel like, I don't know if they, soak up that salt water and kind of use it to stay alive a little bit longer or what but uh anyways that's the idea behind it and then i try to flatten them out as best as possible i feel like if they're stacked up they don't survive as long so flatten them out try to get them on one single layer and that's why i have this kind of wider tupperware here and then secondly i don't normally bring this ice chest with me you just leave that in the car and so this is all i bring it's got the ice on the bottom to keep them cold that paper towel in the middle to kind of separate the ice from direct contact with the shrimp and then also kind of provide them with that like seawater bed that they like to sit on and then have the shrimp right on top and you can leave this in the cooler if you're going to get them overnight or in the fridge maybe if you're getting them the night before and this way i feel like they can last at least a day maybe two days not going to be a long shelf life like uh you know a sand crab or a ghost shrimp or something like that but this is the way that i've preserved them the longest if you have any better ideas, feel free to leave a comment below. But anyways, without further ado, let me show you the rig that we're gonna tie on to throw these out in the surf. So we're gonna be using a very, very basic Carolina rig setup, and I'll show you the whole setup, but we'll start off with a reel. And first off, I wanna give a shout out to Piss Fun for sponsoring this video. This is the Pissy Fun Captain 4000. I've used this before in the surf, caught a huge striped bass on it actually, and um, it held up perfectly, so should do the job out here for some surf perch or the occasional striped bass if we're lucky. And uh, yeah, 6.2 to 1 gear ratio. Really love the loud clicker that this reel has when the drag's being pulled out. And as far as braid capacity, here's the 30 pound braid, which is what we have tied on here. You should fit up to 270 yards on that reel. So plenty enough for even the biggest of striped bass that we might see out here. So I know I've showcased a few of Pissy Fun's reels in recent videos, but I just want to show a few more that they have in their lineup. This one right here, this is the Pissy Fun Carbon X4000. Great little spinning reel, great for the surf. This is the Pissy Fun Alihos Baitcaster reel. And then this is the Pissy Fun Vaultix. So if you check them out online, they have a wide variety of different types of reels, different shapes and sizes to fit your needs. And if you use the promo code down below, DHF15, you can get 15% off your next purchase. And then as far as the rod goes, this is Shimano Clar Claris. I don't think it's super important, but 8.6 foot. I like to use anything from eight foot to 10 foot out in the surf. Really up to you, whatever your personal preference is. This is a medium fast action rod. 
which means it's got kind of a bendy tip and then a stronger backbone. Anyways, we'll get down to it. Like I said, really basic Carolina rig setup. It's just an egg sinker, and that is a one and a half ounce, I believe. I think I got a one ounce, a one and a half, and a two ounce. So based on the conditions, you can switch up the amount of weight you're using. Very simple, if it's more rough, you're gonna to wanna to put on more bait or more weight. And if it's a little bit calmer, you can do it by with a little bit less. But anyways, that's one and a half ounce. You got a bead just to prevent that sinker from getting stuck on the swivel and the knot. And then I have my swivel there. And then I have about a three, four foot leader. I think this is 20 pound fluoro, which is a little heavy. You can definitely go lighter, but we actually just got a little bit of rain here in the Bay Area. So I feel like I can get away with a little bit heavier line. And with the heavier line, you should get a little bit less tangles on the surface. And then finally at the end, we have the hook right there. This is just a size one octopus hook. This is the one that I like to use. Basically, you want to match the size of the hook to the bait you're using. So if you're using like a sand crab or something, I like to go a little bit bigger. If you're using like a plastic grub, maybe a little bit smaller, but this should fit those grass shrimp that we have perfectly. This is a size one. So yeah, without further ado, Put this to the test. We'll have a couple hours out here in the surf this morning, this afternoon. So let's see if we can catch the fish from right here. All right, so there's a couple of different ways to hook these guys. One, you could go from the tail and come up through the head like that. Or what I've seen people do is go right through the, right behind the head here. This is the way we'll start off with it. Go right through the head and kind of thread your hook down through the tail like that. So with this Carolina rig, basically that weight's gonna hit the bottom. It is not gonna stick in one spot, it's gonna roll around a little bit, but this bait should just swing around freely. And if it wants to swim a little bit, it can do that. And then hopefully the surf perch will pick it up while that's happening. Let's toss her in. Just started, not yet. Not that far. Just right, right on the other side of the waves. That brings me to my next point in the surf. Someone was just asking me how far do I typically throw, and it really depends on the surf. And I like to cover a lot of ground, so depending on the day, maybe the fish will be a little bit farther or a little bit closer. But most typically, the fish are gonna be in the surf zone right where the waves are crashing, because that's what's gonna stir up the sand and stir up the sand crabs, which is the probably the most dominant feed for these surf perch and striped bass. Kind of a common misconception is that you need to throw super far to catch fish from the beach. But actually that's not true. A lot of times the fish are a lot closer than you think. Oh, I missed one. Probably took my bait. Yep, no bait, gotta rebait. There we go. Solid fish. Feels like a decent perch. Now don't be afraid to go through a few baits. I mean, I've already missed quite a few fish. Let's get to this one. There we go. Not a bad fish. So these definitely get a lot bigger, but this is your typical surf perch, barred surf perch. There's a couple of different kinds. Actually, there's quite a few different kinds of perch along the California coastline, but there's really two or three main ones that you'll see most often on sandy beaches like this. And one of these is this barred surf perch right there. And yeah, not a bad fish. We'll get them one hooked real quick. These are actually really good eating in my humble opinion, but I like to keep the bigger ones. I feel like a small fish like this, not really worth the effort of playing, processing all that stuff for a couple of bites. So anyways, we'll get this one back. So what I was trying to say there is, don't be afraid to cast there a few times. And if it feels like the fish are stealing your bait, honestly, these surf perch are some of the best bait stealers I've ever encountered. So oftentimes it can take a few tries. You know, I missed probably three or four fish before just getting that one. Oh, there's another one, I just missed another one. Um, but yeah, I don't know what it is about the perch that they're just like nibbling the tip or whatever it is. Out of any of the fish that I've caught these perch, are the best bait sealers out there. So yeah, don't be discouraged, Just stick to it. Eventually you'll get one to stick. All right, gotta rebait again. Just a little 
little guy. Look at that. There's a future slab. Right now, just a tiny little female. You can tell the males from the females. I don't know, if you go back and look at the first fish, it had like a little bit of a different type of fin down here, the inlet anal fin. And uh, this one is just uniform all the way through. That's a female. The first one was a male. Anyways, we'll get this one back. Go, good release. Thanks for coming. Number three. Quick release. Not a bad one. Another female. There we go. And then when you're bringing the fish in, I mean, these are kind of small, so it doesn't really matter, but especially on the bigger fish, you never want to fight against the wave. So when the wave's pulling back like it is right now, you don't want to try and fight the fish against it. You just want to use the waves to your advantage. Bring the fish in when the wave helps you out. And then when the wave is helping out the fish, don't try too hard. Just kind of ride the wave out. All right, number four. Not huge, but we're getting numbers. All right, we've got a few fish out here in the surf. Nothing huge, but if you want to see some big surfers, you can check out our plenty of videos on surf fishing out here in the California coast. Caught some big ones, plenty of different kinds of fish you can catch out here. And on that note, let's go try a different spot and see what else we can catch out here with this rig. All right, no longer in the sand. Now you can see I'm out on the pier. I actually just cast my line and where is it? Right there, sitting out there. We're gonna see what we can find around here. Also a very good place to catch a variety of fish, especially with these grass shrimp that we have today. So let's cast around a little bit, see what we can find. All right, so what I'm gonna do out here, same setup, same Carolina rig. What I'm gonna do out here on the pier is work these pylons right here. So I don't know if you can see underneath the pier there. Yeah, you can kind of see underneath there. Anyways, these pylons provide great structure for all different kinds of fish. Different kinds of perch, sculpin, croaker, you know, you name it. A lot of smaller fish like to hang out around the pylons. There's one that provides food. There's little barnacles and mussels and stuff on those pilings. And then also provides protection from bigger fish. You know, big predatory fish that are coming hunting. They can hang out around these pylons and it'll kind of save them a little bit from those bigger fish. So I'm gonna work this thing along here. I probably won't cast out too much, although I might cast out every once in a while just to see what's out there. Could be a halibut or something out there, striped bass. Um, but mainly working on, you know, pretty much straight down or even underneath the pier. Kind of want to be careful casting underneath the pier because then you can get snagged up. But uh, sometimes that can also be a fruitful area for these little fish. Here's a fish. All right, now I said I'm gonna focus more underneath the pier, but this one came out a little bit. It's another type of surf perch. I'm actually not 100% sure which kind this is. I'll look it up and leave it in the uh, in the video. But anyway, it's another type of little surf perch there. Maybe a silver? I don't know. Anyways, so let's go. All right, let's try here. Try in a little shallower, see what we can find in here. There we go. Another perch, I think. Different kind of perch, maybe? Nope, this is another barred, barred perch. This is the same thing we were catching earlier on the beach, which makes sense because we're kind of in the little surf zone here now. Pure fish number two. Get him unhooked here. All right. 
Here we go. Back you go. There's a little guy. So I tried out deeper, but honestly, most of the action, which is often the case, is in shallower here. Actually, this might be the biggest one of the day. Mm, the one on the beach might have been a little bigger, but that's another bar surfer. So the biggest one I got on the pier, at least. Nice little specimen there. There we go. Quick release. Getting a little windy out here, so I'm ducking behind some cover. That's why it's a little shaded. But anyways, not a bad day out here. Only had a few hours to come out and fish. And honestly, the live shrimp is a very you know, good overall bait. Seems like wherever you are, East Coast, West Coast, other countries, it seems like if you can get a live shrimp in the water, there's a good chance that there's something out there that's gonna wanna eat it. So it's very universal, very simple, easy to use. Just put it on a Carolina rig, drop it in, and see what happens. You know, a lot of times I've been fishing in places where I had no idea what the bait was, even just a regular old shrimp from the store caught some fish. So definitely try it out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. So if you're new to fishing or maybe you're trying a new spot, whether it be boat, shore, pier, surf, jetty, wherever it is, tying a live shrimp, I think there's a good chance that you might have some good luck. So anyways, I know we didn't catch any big ones in this one. I'll leave a couple of videos of my favorites out in the surf of some big perch, strike bass, or even the pier. I think I have another pier video on my channel that I'll leave in the description. Check those videos out if you want to see a little more of what you can catch out here. But anyways, thank you all for watching. We'll see you on the next one.